Hey, Pin Dude here, and welcome back to my vintage pinball. Pinball restoration update, part number four on 1979 Gottlieb Countdown. So part number four, this episode is going to be all about the head. We need to strip down the head. We need to restore everything that's in the head. Uh, we need to do a little bit of bulletproofing on the circuit boards. Uh, we need to get all the metal uh, cleaned and de-rusted. You can see we have a lot of rust to deal with on a lot of the metal parts in the head. Uh, a lot of the screws are rusty. Uh, we need to get rid of all that rust, get everything shined up, make everything look great. Uh, the actual wood part of the cabinet, we need to buff that up and do all the same processes we did on the lower cabinet. Uh, if you saw part number three, we finished up that lower cabinet. The lower cabinet came out great. It's in the game room. It's all ready to go. Uh, so hopefully in this episode, we'll get a good majority of the head done. I don't know if we'll get the whole thing done, uh, but we should get a good ways into restoring all the parts in this head. Uh, so that's what we're going to get started on. I'm warming up the ultrasonic cleaner as we speak so we can start working on some of these metal parts. Uh, so let's get started. All right, so to start off part four of the Gottlieb Countdown Restore here, we need to completely strip down the head so that we can restore all of the components inside and clean and uh, buff up the box here. Uh, unfortunately, this outer door is pretty banged up, uh, but we'll do our best to make it look better. So to start stripping it down, we're gonna remove this door, take all the metal components off it so that we, that so that we can uh, clean up all these parts. And then I'm gonna pop the uh, insert panel out and I'll just put that in the game room for now. Uh, and then we need to get the circuit boards out of here and all the other metal components. So let's get started unbolting a bunch of stuff. All right, so before I brought the head out here, I removed the back glass and uh, left that wrapped up in some towels in the game room so that we don't accidentally break it. Uh, I like the, the setup on these Gottliebs. Uh, the, the back glass is in the door and it has like some plastic clips that hold it in. Uh, it's nice because you don't have to lift the back glass out every time you want to work in the back box like you do on Williams games and uh, you know a lot of other games. You know it's just one uh, key to unlock the door and then you swing the door open, pull the insert board up and you can get to the circuit boards and everything. So I actually like this setup quite a bit. Uh, so I'm gonna start unbolting the, uh, the door here and I'm gonna strip all the components out of the door, put them in Ziploc bags so that we can start ultrasonic in and tumbling and all that. So let's get started. All right, so I got the door and the insert panel off. I put both of those pieces inside, stripped all the metal uh, screws and all the brackets off so we can start cleaning those. Uh, but before I pull the circuit boards out, let's quickly go through uh, what we have here. So this is a Gottlieb System 1. Uh, it's from 1979. And there's three boards in the head, and it's pretty simple. So this small board here is the power supply. This uh, it's a pretty simple power supply. Uh, the only things that really need to be done with it is a cap kit, uh, which the previous owner did on this game, but I will go through to check to make sure he changed all of them. Uh, these header pins, we'll probably end up replacing these because these are the 0.156 header pins, and these are uh, round style pins, it looks like. So I like to go to the newer style squared off pins, get better contact, and also probably have to change uh, the uh, connector 0.156 pins in here, change them to uh, Trifurcon style pins uh, just to make sure we have a better connection. Uh, so this green wire here is the ground mod. And I'm just looking at this solder joint <laughs> and it's really bad. So we got to fix that. The previous owner uh, did the ground mod and it's just uh, not soldered on very good. Uh, so on the power supply board, it's just taking a wire and soldering it to the negative side of this capacitor here and then bolting it to the chassis. Uh, it was bolted right here. 
So this board here is the CPU board. This is an original uh, Gottlieb System 1 CPU board. Uh, originally there was a, uh, a rechargeable battery soldered onto the board right here. And that commonly leaks and causes all kinds of gunk to go on this board. And it, it ruined so many System 1 Gottlieb boards, unfortunately. Uh, so luckily, this board is really clean. I don't see any uh, damage from the battery. Uh, the previous owner has installed a remote 3 AAA battery, uh, 3 AA battery holder. Uh, we're going to change that over to the coin uh, lithium battery, the CR2032, like I've been doing on all my other games. So we'll be doing that on this game. I like that. It's a cleaner install. It's right on the board. You don't have this extra wire in and, and you know, your battery, which is uh, Velcroed on the side of the cabinet on this one. Uh, so this CPU board's really clean. This CPU board is fine. Um, the reason that these are usually changed for like the Niumph board or the Pascal board uh, is usually because of battery acid. Uh, so, but we will want to check these connector pins that I can't see right now because they're on the, uh, the edge connectors on the other side. Uh, the uh, battery corrosion will usually eat those away. So hopefully uh, everything's fine on this board and we will see once we get it out. Uh, and then this board right here is the driver board. Uh, it's basically a bunch of transistors that drive the coils and stuff. Uh, oddly enough, this is a earlier version of the driver board than I believe should be in Countdown. Um, there's two versions of this board. The early version, which was used up till Close Encounters of a Third Kind, which was in 1978. And then the later board that was used uh, after that. The difference is... Uh, the early boards don't have the seven blocking diodes that protect the CPU, and the latter boards have the seven uh, diodes that protect the CPU board. So when I was looking at this game last night, I realized that this board does not have the seven diodes. Uh, there's usually, I believe there's three or four up here, and then there's uh, three or four down in this area somewhere. So we're going to have to add those, and there's two ways to do it. Uh, you can buy a new interconnect connector here that goes from the CPU to the driver board that has the diodes in line on the proper wires. Um, you can cut up this harness and add the diodes to the proper wires on this harness. Or you can take um, these four transistors and these three transistors out, add the diode into the circuit board, and then put the transistor back in and solder the left leg to that diode that you added. Um, that's the method I'm going to do. I, th I like it. It's a cleaner looking install uh, doing it that way. And then the driver board's always, you know, set up for those diodes. So, you know, if this board gets taken out of this game and put in an earlier game, it's already set up with the diodes. So I'll show you how to do that later. But it's basically just uh, removing these seven transistors and adding a 1N4004 diode to the left leg of each transistor. Uh, but other than that, the boards are really clean. Like I said, the game did work. Uh, so we're just bulletproof these a little bit more than they are right now. Uh, but that's about it. So I'm gonna pull these boards out now and I'm gonna put them inside the cabinet in the game room. So they're not out here in the non-temperature controlled garage and they'll stay protected while we do all the other work on the cabinet. Uh, so, so as far as the rest of the ground mods, uh, negative side of this capacitor here is grounded to the chassis and on the driver board uh, it's right here and that's uh, on the chassis you can also see these wires are added to uh, you know ground all the metal in the game to make sure everything's tied together and grounded so that there's no chance of uh, getting shocked when the game's on and you touch you know some of the metal so uh, let's get the rest of this stuff out and we will start cleaning up all this metal. All right, so in the head we have a lot of rusty metal, uh, even more so than we had in the lower cabinet for some reason. Uh, when I went to look at this game and I went into the head to look at the circuit boards, the first thing I noticed were these big brackets. These sit on the bottom of the cabinet and the bolts that bolt the head to the cabinet go through here. And look at all the rust on these things. 
they look really bad. Uh, so we need to clean them up. We're going to do these in Evaporust, uh, but like I mentioned in previous video, we want to clean these parts first. Uh, so we're going to do that hopefully in the ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, I'm warming that up right now. I'm hoping I can kind of get these in there enough to, to clean them. And then we also have these brackets have a lot of rust on them. Uh, the difference between these two brackets right now is these ones I already put in the ultrasonic cleaner. So you can see they look, you know, clean and shiny. Uh, but they have a lot, of, a lot of rust on them. So these ones are ready to go into the evapor rust. Uh, but I need to get these brackets cleaned up a little bit. Also, these screws are really rusty. So I'm going to put these in evapor rust as well after they go through the ultrasonic cleaner. So any any hardware that is has any rust on it, we're going to be putting it in evapor rust. But first, it goes through the ultrasonic cleaner. So he, so I'm going to use these brackets and as a, as an example. So this is the bracket before it goes to the ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, and next, I'm going to show you what these look like when I get them out of the ultrasonic cleaner. And then we'll do the evapor rust. All right, so let's see if these brackets will fit in my little Harbor Freight cleaner here. All right, so I'm able to get most of it in there. So I'm going to have to run it uh, two cycles like this, and then I'll flip it to get this lower part down. So set this to 480, hit on. All right, so all the hardware from the uh, head, I first ultrasonic cleaned it. And then all these screws were in walnut shells for 48 hours. And most of it is coming out really nice. But some of it has quite a bit of rust on it. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to sort through all these screws. And I still have uh, some screws in the ultrasonic cleaner right now, as you can hear. Uh, and anything that is particularly rusty, we're going to put it in the evaporus with all these other brackets we have to do and see if we can get these a little cleaner. Um, I don't like changing hardware if I don't have to, because um, that's money that you, you know, would have to spend that you don't need to spend if you, we can get these cleaned up some. So that's why I'm, I'm just going to sort through anything that's rusty. I'm going to set it aside. And then all this other stuff uh, will now be ready to go through corn cob media for 48 hours. And uh, all the stuff that looks like this, you know, will look great once we get done. So hopefully the evapor rust will uh, clean these bolts up enough so that we can put them back in walnut shells for probably 24 hours and then into corn cob for 48 hours. And uh, we should end up with all pretty newish looking hardware. All right, so I got my bracket out of the ultrasonic cleaner and you can see uh, there's not a lot of difference. The backside you can see is a lot cleaner and shinier, uh, but the front, it's just all rust. So the next step is going to be to put this in a vapor rust uh, and uh, see what happens. So I have all the screws ready to go, all the rusty screws that are going to go in the evapor rust, and all my brackets. And I actually have some more brackets that need to go in the evapor rust. So hopefully we'll be able to get all this into one evapor rust Tupperware container. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. I'm just waiting on the second bracket to get done in the ultrasonic cleaner. And we'll get this loaded up in the Tupperware and pour some evapor rust on it. All right, so we have all the brackets and screws and everything's been cleaned in the ultrasonic cleaner. So we're ready to put this in a vapor rust now. And I locked out, this is like my biggest uh, Tupperware container that I have a lid for. And these brackets just fit. And the lid can even go on. So we need to load this so that we can put it in a vapor rust. So I think I'm going to put the big brackets like that. And then we'll kind of get the smaller brackets in here. You know, I want to load it so like that you don't have like metal sitting on top of metal because then the evapor rust might not be able to get in there. So I'm kind of like stacking the things so that they're like, you know, sitting on top so that, you know, evapor rust can get on all sides of everything. Um, and then this plate I'm going to kind of put on top. Of course, I need to get it in there so I can still get the lid on. 
So I think that'll be all right as long as I get the lid on, which I can. So that looks pretty good. So now I'm just going to take my Evaporust and fill up this container without hopefully making a mess. All right, so we got it filled up with Evaporust. You can already see all this foaming. It's like bubbling. I'm assuming that's like some of the process of this stuff eating the rust because there's so much rust on the inside of these brackets. Uh, but we're going to get the lid on here. And then, of course, I should have done this where I'm actually, oh, no, oh. All right, so all these metal parts were in the Evaporust for 24 hours maybe a little longer uh, and I just took everything out and rinsed everything real good outside with the garden hose and blew everything off so the brackets you can see the brackets look really good no more rust obviously the rust did severe damage I mean basically straight through the uh, zinc plating uh, but you know we'll be able to polish this up and it, it'll look better it's obviously not going to look perfect the only way you're going to get this perfect is to send it out and get it re-zinc plated. Uh, I don't do that on my games because it's a cost that, you know, would really add up if you wanted to replate all these parts. And that's not the kind of restorations I do. So we're just gonna, probably on this, because it's pretty bad, I'm probably gonna have to use the mag and aluminum polish on a Scotch-Brite pad to really kind of even this up a little bit, make it shine, and it'll look real good. But they came out pretty good. I'm, you know, obviously you saw in the before how rusty they were. So this is after the um, ultrasonic cleaning and then the evaporust. And then I'll show you these brackets again after we do the next step. All these other pieces came out real good. You know, all the rust is gone. These are going to go in the tumblers now. Uh, and then the hardware, the hardware came out extremely good. Uh, this is the first time I've ever put like screws and stuff in the evaporust. Um, all these heads were complete rust, and now they are all silver, and there's no more rust. So uh, this hardware is going to go in walnut shells now for uh, probably 24 hours, and then I'm going to switch it over to the corn cob media. Uh, so I'll kind of show you how this stuff is looking after the uh, next tumbler stages. But definitely, you know, Evaporust is, you know, a savior, really. All right, so I got all my hardware here out of the walnut shells. So we're done with the third stage that I did to these uh, screws. They started as all really rusty screws. I put them through the ultrasonic cleaner. Then I put them in a vapor rust for 24 hours. And now they've been in walnut shells in my tumbler with a little bit of chrome polish for 48 hours. And you can see the heads on the carriage bolts are looking really good. Some of them, you know, the rust did quite a lot of damage to the zinc plate in and they don't look as good. But luckily we have a mix of very good looking ones and some that aren't as good looking. So we'll put the good looking ones in locations where you see them. And we'll use the ones that don't look as good and use them in areas where you don't see them as much. All these uh, flat blade uh, screws, the heads were completely rusted over. Now they look real good. So I went through, I took them out of the walnut shell tumbler and I cleaned all the walnut shells out of the slots and the threads and the inside of the nuts. Uh, and we're gonna have to do that again because we're gonna be putting them in corn. So we'll have to clean these out again, but it really doesn't take that long. <clears throat> so now these are gonna go in the corn cob tumbler for 48 hours. And you will see a pretty remarkable difference to how shiny uh, these screws look after we get through that process. So I'm going to load up these in the corn cob tumbler now with a little bit of mag and aluminum polish and run them for 48 hours and I'll show you what they look like after that. All right, so I also have these brackets. These corner brackets were completely rusted over on the inside. The uh, evaporust took care of that. These had a bunch of rust on them too. Um, so these were in the uh, a tumbler for with walnut shells uh, for 48 hours. These were in the berries tumbler. All the hardware that came out really good. That was in the Amazon $40 Amazon tumbler. Did a fine job. So now these are going to go into corn cob as well, 
and they will look a lot better when we're done. And then these brackets here, which uh, I'm not sure if this is a chrome plate in. These are the hinges for the back box. You can see they're a different finish than like your standard zinc plate in that's on a lot of the pinball. This is almost like a chrome finish. And you can see from all the pitting on these, that's where all the rust was. And when the evaporust took the rust off, you know, it, it still leaves the damage to the zinc plate in. And these were in corn cob media with some magnet aluminum polish for 48 hours. And they look real good. And they're pretty much done. All I'm going to do is I'm going to rub a little bit of chrome polish on them. And that will help protect the spots that are worn through the zinc coating. That'll uh, protect that from rusting over again. So all the hardware is coming out good. So I'm going to put these brackets and all this hardware and corn cob, and I will show you what, how this all comes out when uh, that's done in 48 hours. You know, the great thing about this is, uh, you know, it doesn't take much time. You know, it's just moving things from one tumbler to the other, and um, you're able to save all this hardware, and it does a really good job. Previously, what I used to do, especially with the hardware, is back when I only had one tumbler, I was only using walnut shells. And then I would uh, take these to the, uh, the Harbor Freight buffing wheel and use the white rouge. And I would buff every screw. So all these screws I would buff by hand. It would take, you know, hours to get through all the hardware in the pinball machine. But now that I'm doing everything with the ultrasonic and evaporust, walnut shell tumbler and corn cob tumbler, um, it is a huge time savings. And the hardware comes out, you know, amazing. All right, so here's all our screws out of the head. I just took them out of corn cob media, out of the tumbler, where they were run for 48 hours, two days, uh, with a break be after the 24 hours to add a little more uh, magnet aluminum polish. And I just uh, cleaned all the corn cob out of the slots and out of the nuts and everything. And look how good this hardware looks. This hardware was so rusty, it looked like it was ready for the garbage can. And with not much effort for me, I mean, all I had to do was drop it in an ultrasonic cleaner, drop these bolts in some evaporust, and then drop them in a couple tumblers, you know, spend a little time cleaning the uh, media out of the uh, screws. But we were able to save all this hardware, and it looks great. Look at the heads on the carriage bolts. They have a mirror finish to them. Uh, you know, they look perfect. All the uh, other screws now look nice and shiny. All the nuts and washers have a somewhat of a mirror finish to them. So these are all ready to go. I will, uh, you, I'll put a little polish on the heads of the uh, carriage bolts. That will help protect them from rusting again. Uh, but other than that, these, uh, all this hardware is ready to go back into the head. And here's some of those uh, rusty brackets that we had. Had a whole bunch of rust on them. Clean them up in the evaporust, and uh, these just came out of corn, corn cob media where they were in for uh, 48 hours, and they have a nice mirror finish to them. Yes, they have a little bit of pitting, you know, from where all the rust was, but, you know, they're nice and shiny, and uh, they're going to look real good once we get them back in the head. All right, so we got the head uh, pretty much all stripped out now. Uh, so I need to take these metal plates out well i don't need to take the metal plates out i want to take the metal plates out because i want to clean underneath and sand the inside of the cabinet get rid of any funky odors that might be you know on the wood uh and the sanding will kind of freshen up the inside and it'll look real good and it'll allow us to clean these plates a little better now unfortunately gottlieb uh, stapled these plates down you can see there's like a bazillion staples holding these tin grounding plates down. So I'm gonna use my uh, handy dandy little tack remover here and remove them. And let me show you the main reason why you would wanna remove this top, uh, this, definitely this top plate. So uh, Gottlieb put all these uh, vent holes on the top of the cabinet to try to you know, get the heat to expel from the cabinet, you know, the heat made from the circuit boards. And then in there, that's the bottom side of that tin plate that's on the uh, inside top of the cabinet that I'm going to remove. Look at all of the funk that is sitting on top of that top plate. There's just a bunch of funk. And there's a bunch of funk. See, it's stuck to the cabinet here. I don't know what the heck it is, 
but it is like glue. It's on there really good. So I need to get that off. I'm going to have to be really careful, you know, because I don't want to damage the, uh, the paint because we're not repainting this head. We're just cleaning it up and buffing it. <clears throat> but that's the main reason I need to get this plate out because I need to get all that funk off the plate shine up that plate so it looks real good both on the inside and on the outside here even though that even though this is on the top of the pinball machine and you'll never see it you know um, i want to do a you know a nice restoration on this game and i don't want that plate to have all that funk plus i don't even know what this funk is so we need to get rid of it all right so i'm just going to use my tack remover and uh carefully try to get these staples out without damaging the tin and uh, it's not going to be fun, and it's going to take a while. But you see, once you get under it, they'll pop right out. This tack remover, I've showed this before, it's got, it's got nice sharp ends on it, so it's, it's fairly easy to get under the uh, staple. You will come across a couple like this one that is really recessed, uh, but it still came out pretty easy. And then I just take some uh, regular pliers. And I just pull the rest of the staple out. And you see we didn't do any damage to the tin. And we're able to get those staples out. And then when I restaple it in, I'll try to get close to those holes so that we're not putting a bunch of new holes in here. So uh, I'll continue to work on this, and then I'll come back after I get it all out. All right, so I got all the staples out of this plate, and I got the plate down, and you can see how, you know, how gross it is. It's supposed to be this bright silver color, and it's all brown and got stuff stuck to it. Uh, and you can see how they attach this. They just used uh, some extra plywood here for runners. So there's a little bit of a gap between the vent and the plate, so the air, you know, the hot air can get through there and out the vents. Uh, so now that I got this plate off, i got to work on this bottom plate. And I also have some stickers that I need to remove, so let me show you that. All right, so uh, I have some labels that I need to remove uh, because I either need to reproduce them or reuse the originals. I'm hoping to reuse the originals since we're not doing a full restore on this game. Uh, the originals will look better, I think, uh, with a game that we're not doing a full restore on. So this one here is double stick take down. Uh, so that one's going to be a little tricky. Uh, I'm going to have to get a blade for that. It's loose on the bottom, but it's still stuck on the top. These ones on the side are uh, stapled on, so we need to be very careful taking these staples out. Let's see if we even have a chance here. Uh, yeah, that one came out. All right, so we're able to save that label. All right, so there's those two labels. They, they still look pretty good. You know, we'll clean them up. We'll try to flatten them out a little better. I'm going to put them between two uh, heavy either books or metal plates to try to flatten them out a little bit. Um, I could reproduce them, but like I said, I'd rather reuse the originals. Now this one, I'm going to take a blade and see if we can get this one up without tearing it yeah this one I don't think we're gonna get this one out without destroying it so at this point I just want to get it up good enough so that I can put it in the flatbed scanner all right so we got that one out it's actually not too bad uh, but this one will probably have to reproduce uh, and it'll probably be better. You see it was uh, two strips of double-sided tape. So instead, I'll print this on a, a, a shiny label. And then we'll just stick it back to the clean plate. And it'll look uh, real nice. All right, so now I'm just going to take the uh, staples out of this plate and get this metal plate done. Uh, uh, get this metal plate out of here. And then we'll be able to start the uh, restoration of the actual wood cabinet. All right, I got all the staples out of the uh, metal plate here. So yeah, this will lift right out. Uh, so now I'm just gonna vacuum up all the uh, stuff that's under the plate here. There's quite a lot of gunk in here. 
and then uh, we'll be able to start uh, restoring the head here, getting all the wood cleaned up on the inside and getting the outside all uh, cleaned up and buffed. All right, so the next thing I did is I went around with my quarter sheet palm sander. Uh, and I put three, 320 grit sandpaper on here and I did all of these sides, the bottom, the sides, some of the in here and on the bottom uh, just to clean all the uh, gunk off, get it nice and smooth. You can see how nice it looks. Um, and the uh, quarter sheet palm sander is perfect for this because you can get right into the corner. You know, you wouldn't want to use an orbital sander on this because you wouldn't be able to get up in these corners and stuff. So that worked out really good. And then uh, by hand, I also used 320. And like on like this big open in here, I chamfered the edges. It was a real sharp edge with a lot of splintery wood before. And like when you set up the game, you need to reach your hand down here to get the wires down in the cabinet. Um, and you could easily get splinters. So we cleaned that all up. I also did like these edges here by hand with a 320. So we got the inside of the cabinet looking real nice and um, that's pretty much ready to go now. So now we need to work on the outside of the cabinet. All right, so now we're gonna start working on the, uh, the outside of the cabinet, the actual painted graphics on the cabinet. So we're gonna do the same process that I did on the lower cabinet, all the same process because we want the finished product of the head to look identical to the finished product of the lower cabinet. So we're going to start with some Magic Eraser and uh, Novus 2. Uh, just I uh, cut a piece, in this case uh, it's almost half of one of the Magic Erasers, and I put Novus 2 on it, and I'm just going to scrub the cabinet. Now this side I already did, you can see how good it looks. The whites are real nice and white. They weren't white when I started, they were kind of like a uh, nicotine looking yellow, and there was a bunch of black marks in the cabinet. Now you can see, you know, there is some damage and somebody uh, scratched their initials in here. We're not going to touch that up on this game. I actually like the patina on this game. The paint is in exceptional condition. Um, you know, there's no, uh, there's no cracking in the paint. There's no uh, flaking in the paint. This paint is in really good shape. You know, there's just some wear here or there. Uh, but I am extremely happy how it looks after the newest too. And there's one more step, just like on the lower cabinet, that we're going to do, do on this. Uh, and we'll do that in a second. But for now, let's go to the other side of the head and uh, start cleaning it up to make it look as good as this side. All right, so this side I haven't done the process on yet. Um, all I did is I took a uh, microfiber cloth and I sprayed the microfiber cloth with Mean Green. I didn't spray the cabinet with Mean, mean Green. I sprayed the microfiber cloth with Mean Green. And I just went over the whole cabinet before doing the Nubis pro process. And that takes any, um, you know, any of the looser dirt and stuff on the cabinet so it doesn't, you know, get on your uh, magic eraser and wear out your magic eraser quicker. So you can see on this side, the paint's actually not as good on this side, uh, probably because there was some moisture on this side of the cabinet wherever it was stored. We have some planking, uh, and there's some dirt in the planking, so we should be able to make the planking look less visible with the magic eraser and uh, Nuvis 2. There's also some uh, black scuff marks in here, not nearly as bad as the other side had. And you can see we also have some damage to the paint on this side. Uh, so pretty easy, uh, it's basically just, you know, scrubbing. I just uh, pretty much load up the Magic Eraser with Nuvis 2. And we'll start on this black mark here. I'll show you how easy this uh, disappears. So I just kind of, I usually use a uh, circular pattern, uh, but once we get to this planking, we're going to want to go back and forth over this planking to try to pull any dirt out of there. The one thing this process does do is that you'll use a lot of Nuvis too, but it's worth it in the end because it really uh, shines up the paint. So I already got that black mark gone. This one's halfway gone. So it's almost completely gone now. Now you do have to be careful doing this. Um, you can already see I have a little bit, I believe that is a little bit of the orange color on my magic eraser. So 
you have to be careful with this and you have to not scrub too hard and not scrub the same area too long. And once you see some uh, paint transferring onto your a magic eraser, um, then don't scrub that area anymore and move on. You don't want to wear through the paint. Remember, magic eraser is sandpaper. It's a very fine sandpaper, but always remember that magic eraser is sandpaper um, and you will uh, wear through the paint very easily if you scrub an area too hard or too long. So I'm just going to go over this, uh, this whole side and get all these marks off and get these whites looking good. And then uh, I will come back and we will move on. All right, so once you're happy with how it looks, uh, you're going to have a lot of white residue from the Magic Eraser. And of course, the Nuvis 2 um, leaves a haze. So I just take a clean microfiber cloth and you're just going to buff it off like you're buffing wax off. And now I just want to check to make sure I didn't miss anything. You know, make sure all my whites are white. They do look very white. I don't see any, uh, all the black marks are gone. So we, were, we are done with this side for now. Uh, so I'm going to go around and do the uh, top, the bottom, and then I got to flip it over and do the back. So I'm going to do that process of Magic Eraser and uh, Novus 2 on those other surfaces. Uh, and then I'll come back and we'll move on to the next step. All right, so now that we went over the whole cabinet with Magic Eraser, I got my little Wen 4-inch buffer here with a buffing wheel on it. And I'm going to use, once again, Novus 2. And I'm going to put a bunch on my pad here and work it in with the buffer off so you don't spray yourself in the face with a bunch of Novus 2. And I'm going to go over the whole cabinet with this. And then uh, after I go through the, all over the whole cabinet, I'm going to get a new pad and I'm going to buff off all the residue with the Wen 4-inch buffer here. So let's work this in. I'm using moderate pressure. And this is really gonna shine up the paint. And you can already see how nice the finish looks. This does a good job of uh, not only shining up the paint, but also, uh, you know, really getting in the cracks in case you missed anything with the Magic Eraser. And it'll leave a really nice, smooth uh, finish on this uh, original Gottlieb paint. So I'm just going to go around, do the whole cabinet. It's not going to take long. It'll probably take, oh, I don't know, 20 minutes to a half hour to do the whole head. I'm going to do the back, too, even though the back's not in the greatest of shape. This will help to, you know, shine it up a little bit and make it look better. All right, now that we went around the whole cabinet with the Wen and the Novus 2, uh, I got a brand new pad I'm going to put on here, a dry brand new pad. And I'm just going to buff off all the uh, residue from the last step. And that'll really buff it out and make it shine. see how uh, how shiny that surface is now and it's got a real nice feel to it it's nice and smooth and it feels real nice uh, so it's gonna go over the whole cabinet using this process and then I'll come back all right now I got a brand new microfiber cloth and I'm just gonna go over it just in case there's any residue left over, but uh, we're pretty much uh, done at this point. It looks really nice, and it's got a real nice look to it. So now, all we got left to do is just like the lower cabinet, we're going to touch up some of the uh, bare wood. So I'm going to use that blue spray paint that I use that's a perfect match for this uh, blue on the countdown here. I'm going to spray it onto a piece of cardboard, 
use a little paintbrush and I'm just going to fill in the bare wood. Uh, I don't want to touch up any of the actual paint. I just want the bare wood to disappear. So let me finish kind of wiping this down and then we'll get all set up and do that. All right, so I got my uh, Rust-Oleum uh, Satin Sapphire. It's like a perfect match for the uh, cabinet here. Uh, so I just spray this on the cardboard. And then I'm just using a little brush. Now, I'm not touching... I, I want to touch up some areas, but I don't want it to look like I touched it up. So what I do is I just put some paint on the brush. And I kind of just dry brush it. So I just kind of, you know, I'm not looking to be perfect here. I just want to like stain that wood blue so that your eye is not attracted to the blue. I don't want to get any blue on the actual cabinet. I will wipe that off real quick if I do. I just want to turn any areas that are bare wood so that they're not bare wood anymore. So if you overpaint, kind of get it down in the cracks and then kind of wipe it off. Uh, when it dries, it'll not look like you touched it up. All right, now we got this part of the head all cleaned up and ready to go. Let's start reassembling things. So we're going to start with the uh, back panel. And one thing to note here, before we staple this down, we want to get the... Uh, we want to get these metal rails screwed in first so that we make sure that the plate's in the right position and then we'll staple it in. You also see I reused this uh, driver board transistor decal that I kind of had a hard time getting off. Uh, I was able to fix it up decently and clean it and I like the way the original stickers look since we're not doing like a full bore restore on this game. So I stuck this down with some uh, Gorilla double stick tape on all the corners all the way around and it looks real good. So I'm going to uh, look at my before pictures to make sure I get all of these uh, all of these rails put back in the right position. We'll screw them in and then we'll staple this down and get the top plate on and then uh, just keep putting stuff together. <clears throat> Alright so here's all the uh, internal parts from the head that have all been restored through Evaporust and the tumblers and polishing compound and wax and everything else. Everything's nice and clean and shiny and organized in bags. So this should go, go together really quick. So let's get started. All right, so I got my rail screwed down. So now I know the plate is in the right spot. I'm going to get my stapler here and I'm going to staple it back in trying to get as close to the original holes as possible and I'm sure this is going to take a few tries to get the air pressure right. So I got my long nose stapler and I have this, I've mentioned this before, I have this little airline made up that has the regulator in it and I know that on my stapler here it won't fire a staple blow about 40 PSI. Uh, so I'm going through a metal plate here. I'm figuring I'm going to need a little more. I'm going to start at like 45. And uh, see, let's see what happens here. All right, so that did a pretty good job and that sunk it pretty good. My pressure is about 48 PSI. Yeah, so that, that looks about fine. So, I'm just going to go around and uh, staple the rest of this in.
All right, so we got the main part of the head here uh, put back together as much as I need to put together for now. Uh, just got the uh, lock assembly all done. Looks real good. Uh, so now we need to start working on that orange frame, the, the door that the back glass sits on. So we need to kind of polish that up. I'm going to use uh, mostly all the same processes I used with the Novus 2 and the Magic Eraser and the buffer and all that. So let's get working on that and then we'll be able to reassemble the door back on the head here. All right, so we got the, uh, the orange frame for the door here. It's in uh, pretty good shape, but it's uh, pretty dirty. So we need to work on uh, cleaning this up. So uh, we're just gonna use the same process I used before with the Magic Eraser and the uh, Novus 2. So like, you know, we have a lot of marks like this. I need to see if we can get them off. And you can see the uh, Magic Eraser and the Novus is, or Novus, I know I say that wrong all the time. It's doing a good job. You also see that we do have some orange on the uh, Magic Eraser here, a little of the orange. So, you know, we need to be careful and not do an area too long. Uh, so I'm just gonna go around the whole frame here with uh, numerous pieces of Magic Eraser because these will break down uh, pretty easy. I also need to do on the uh, inside part of the door, in the grooves and everything, uh, there's a lot of uh, gunk built up. So we're gonna need to uh, probably use a little bit of Mean Green and uh, the air blower to get some of that gunk out of there. Uh, so I will be back once I get this looking pretty. All right, so we're done with the Magic Eraser. All of the major marks have come off and it, uh, it looks pretty good for what it is. So now I'm gonna get out the uh, Wen Buffer <clears throat> and we're just gonna go over this whole thing just like I did the lower cabinet and the head. And we'll get some shine out of this original paint and it'll look pretty good. Now, this is probably gonna make a mess but let's get going. All right, we got the, uh, the uh, door here all buffed up. It looks really good, nice and shiny. You can see, really looks good. Really came out better than I even expected. Uh, so now we have all the hardware uh, that we need to put some of the brackets and stuff in on the head. There's a bunch of uh, support brackets and then the brackets that make the uh, door swing. So let's get those on and get this door bolted up. All right, let's get this door on now that we got all the hardware on it. All right, so I got to I left the bolts loose on the latches. I got to adjust those. I got to get the spacers in here to get the door spaced right. Uh, but it's pretty much uh, in the right position and uh, looking good. <clears throat> all right, I got the latch all adjusted up. And this is one thing that didn't work good at all when I bought it was this lock assembly on the door. But now it is nice and smooth, nice positive lock. So this is as far as I'm going to go with the head out here in the garage. Uh, so now we're going to go into the game room and bolt this up. And uh, that'll be it for this video. But uh, I like to do it this way. The head can get awfully heavy in some of these games. And you'll risk scratching up, you know, the, either the head or the cabinet trying to get it on, especially if you're doing it by yourself like I am. 
Uh, so it's always better to, to, when it's nice and light like this, get it bolted to the head, and then we can work on putting the rest of the components in uh, in the game room as we restore them. All right, so we're back in the game room. I got the head here, and I got the cabinet slid out a little bit so I have room to work. And I got my head bolts and washers and a 9 16 uh, socket on a ratchet so I can tighten this down. Uh, most important on these older games, make sure you put the power cord into the slot in the top of the head. Otherwise, you'll get the head all bolted down and then realize that you forgot to put the power cord in. You've got to take the head back off. Uh, so you don't want to do that. So i got my bolts here. And I'm going to get the washers ready to go. Because when I get this head up here, it's probably going to be a little tippy. All right. So this is why I'm doing this now, because the head is nice and light. And we should be able to do this pretty easy. Before we, before we bolt it down, we want to make sure this power cord is not pinched. <clears throat> Looks like we're all right. All right, so now it's just a matter of uh, getting the bolts to line up. Which is always fun, since you really can't see anything. So uh, previously, I uh, forget if I mentioned this or not, before I brought the cabinet in here, uh, I have a tap. It's the same tap that you would use to tap out your uh, leg bolt plates. I ran a tap through the T-nuts in the head here, and I did replace that one T-nut, which I think I showed, the one that I had a heck of a time getting the bolt out at the uh, previous owner's house. So these bolts uh, will go right in now, nice and smooth. So we're just going to run these down until they're snug and then we have to position the head. All right, so to line this up, I'm making sure I'm flush on the back of the head here. And then I got a tape measure. I want to check from the neck. I got four inches on that side. And I got a oh, bit tight here. A little over four inches on this side. All right, so I got exactly four inches on this side, four inches on that side. Check my back one more time. And make sure I'm flush. And to make sure the power cord's okay. And I think, I think we're good to bolt it down. All right, so there it is, the head mated to the lower cabinet in the game room. Uh, yeah, the head's a little empty, uh, but it'll be nice and easy to populate in here, and it made it much easier to put it on. Uh, door works real nice, and I just realized it hits the wall, so I gotta move the game a little bit. But we got that all set up good. So we're looking pretty good, and that'll be it for this video, part number four of Gottlieb Countdown. So, uh, Oh, also one more thing. Uh, this game was missing a cash box when I bought it. So I happened to get the correct uh, cash box for this game on eBay. Uh, pretty cheap. Uh, it does need to go through Evaporust and stuff like that. Uh, but that'll be in a future episode. So let's uh, head out to the garage and wrap this episode up. All right, so there you have it. Part number four of the 1979 Gottlieb Countdown. And we got a ton of work done in this episode. And the head is now bolted on the cabinet. It's looking great. Uh, still some work to do. 
Uh, the next episode, we're probably going to start off with circuit boards, and I'm excited about that. That's one of my favorite things is messing with circuit boards. Uh, and we don't have a lot to do. Uh, we just got to add some blocking diodes to the driver board, uh, put a CR2032 lithium battery on the CPU. Uh, we're going to be adding the LED diagnostic lights onto the CPU, the driver board, and the power supply because Rockwell, the company that designed the boards for Gottlieb, didn't give us any diagnostic lights. Uh, so we'll cover that in the next episode. Uh, then we should get those circuit boards into the head. We got to repin some connectors and a couple other miscellaneous things. But that's all next time on Countdown Restoration Update Part Number Five. Uh, for now, it is Thanksgiving Eve. I got a turkey outside in a smoker. Uh, it's supposed to go down to like in the teens tonight and uh, not even hit 30 degrees tomorrow on Thanksgiving over here in New Jersey. Uh, so I hope everybody has a good Thanksgiving. Uh, if you're watching this in the future, I hope you have a good whatever holidays coming up. And uh, that'll do it. So I want to thank you for watching My Vintage Pinball. Check me out on Facebook, uh, My Vintage Pinball starring Pin Dude. If you have a question, comment, uh, or if you just want to email me, it is fierodug at gmail.com. Uh, so I am Pin Dude. This is My Vintage Pinball, and I will see you next time.